Join me as we dig into more homebrew factions for D20 Modern. Hello everyone, and welcome back down here to the Gamer's Den. With me, your host, Jordan, your Master of Lore and Storyteller Extraordinaire. And that's right, we are covering more homebrew factions for the D20 Modern Tabletop game. And what factions can we possibly add in here? Well, there's a wide myriad of possibilities, but today we are covering a group that was really not covered all that much and really underrepresented throughout all of the D20 Modern books, actually. And that is the Fae. That's right, we're going to be bringing in the fairy courts of spring, summer, autumn, and winter, as well as the myriad unaligned factions and wild fae that uh, don't really congregate in the courts. And the reason for this is, is, well, there are several reasons, in fact, and we're going to get into why you want to use them now. To begin with, there are only two fae creatures listed in all of the D20 modern books. Yeah, they have the rules for creating more there, but... Uh, that doesn't, there's there's room and opportunity here that we can uh, take advantage of for bringing the, in these larger factions. And it will help make it easier for you to create different kinds of fae associated with those different factions. This will help you tailor fit them to the different themes of each group. So it will help make them feel distinct, useful, interesting, and not so much so generic. And not only that, but there's an emphasis on stealth and illusion magics for most fey creatures, which provides opportunity for you to bring in other challenges to the players. Things like wordplay, intrigue, leveraging favors, and making deals will present these unique challenges. Not only that, but the opportunities for combat that come, uh, come up can easily incorporate all classes, abilities, and skill sets. Something you absolutely want to do in order for your players to feel like their characters are useful throughout whatever setting they might be playing in. You want them to be able to feel like they can contribute to these various interactions. So it's massively important that you get that set right and have these different... Uh, different groups to present these different challenges and to that end we're going to go ahead and now dive into the different factions first off we have the she and yes that's how it's pronounced gaelic has many interesting pronunciations i didn't quite believe it at first but after research and several reassurances by those who knew how to pronounce this it is pronounced she they're comprised of the realms of spring and summer, and the Shi are led by the High Summer Queen Titania. As primal forces of nature and growth, these Fey often appear harmless and charming to those unfamiliar with them. So, they can be deceptively dangerous to the party, and they're more likely to be able to be appeased though and bargained with, and reprisals for slights against them are more likely to be nuisances than harmful, though it will scale in terms of uh, the offense that's provided. So not offering up a proper uh, uh, contribution or offering to a particular phase spirit, that can result in some annoying uh, reprisals against you. You know, all the food in your fridge being spoiled, the electricity uh, in your house just entirely burning out. But uh, doing more drastic things like offending nobles within the Shi courts, uh, killing somebody important in the Shi courts, that will of course see greater and greater uh, reprisals against the party overall. But because they tend to be more benevolent, this is a group that the players can interact with on more or less friendly terms, if, albeit with a measure of caution. Because the way they use their words, the way they put things together verbally will allow the Fey different, uh, different measures and means of exploiting various loopholes, abiding by strict letter of the law rather than what's intended, or the letter of the agreement rather, rather than what's intended by it. That can absolutely happen and should happen, so this gives you, the DM, some leeway into being a little bit more exacting with the players without being outright malicious. But if you want to be more malicious, well, then you have no, no need to look further than the Unshi, the Fae of the Autumn and Winter Banners that collect under the halls of the Deep Winter King Kaer Morin. The Unshi are cruel and driven by an unbidden malice. They resent the modern world, 
but are still fascinated by its ability to bring both abundance and famine and seek to try to undermine these systems to induce the latter. They're deceptive and capricious, and they readily try to undermine the party unless mutual benefit is the best, most pragmatic course of action. In other words, if self-preservation or the advancing of their own interests means that uh, working with the party is uh, honestly and without stabbing them in the back is the most uh, efficient means of going about things. That, or if the party's strong enough that they don't think that they can get away with it without incurring great damage, then they'll work with them. So strength and dominance are definitely things important to the Winter Fae. They will remember offenses for centuries, however. Pranks and revenge will be maliciously cruel and direct. And combat with them, if the players go head-to-head -head with these Fae, will be sudden and decisive and always on favorable terms for the Fae of the Unshi Courts. So this is where you can really be cruel and exacting with the players, much more so than with the Summer Fae. You can be much harsher here, and these are definitely, they're definitely oppositional to most mortals, but if there's something that can, that can be offered or gained from working with mortals, they'll certainly do so, and given the multiple billions of us on this planet, they definitely see the need to keep their heads down and work with willing forces or compliant forces in order to see their interests advanced in the mortal realms. And then going on from there, we have the Wild Fae. Also known somewhat incorrectly as the Courtless, there are actually many unaligned courts of Wild Fae who owe allegiance to neither of the major Fae powers, most prominent of which, identified by linguist, author, and shadow hunter Jacob Grimm of the Brothers Grimm, was the court of Der Schimmelreiter, leader of what is known as the Wild Hunt. The unaligned represent a number of different smaller factions of the Fae. They're not as interested in the jockeying and politics of the larger courts, they're closer to representing their various aspects and different parts of the Fey realms. In the case of the Wild Hunt, they, in they represent and engage with the hunt. They go on the Wild Hunt all across the mortal realm, chasing worthy prey, running them down, and adding them to their collection of bounties and trophies. While still cunning, they also will follow many of the same generalized generalized rules for the Fae as a whole, so they'll still have the clever wordplay and dialogue and seek to uh, have that verbal exchange that leaves them out on top, but this is where you can really get creative and come up with different many smaller courts and different kinds of Fae that represent different things. They can tend more towards the chaotic, the evil, the good, or just the out and out neutral, uh, capricious, uh, uh, joyful, jovial, uh, malignant, mean, cruel. You can find a number of different aspects and personalities portrayed here, and it's something you should absolutely do so. Work to tailor, make, and fit these different factions and different fey to suit what you have going on in your campaigns. But these are just one man's thoughts. Certainly there's plenty more that can be done. There's many, many, many factions that are possible within D20 Modern, within the urban fantasy setting. And the number of creatures that you can come up with are just wild, varied, and diverse in and of themselves. So what did you think? Well, go on down in the comments down below. Did I miss my mark with this one? Or did you find this entertaining and useful? And what feedback do you have for me? Certainly, I'm open to hearing it. Uh, the best way to advance is, of course, getting the opinions and feedback of others. But with that said, we're going to call it there. I've been your host, Jordan, your master of lore and storyteller extraordinaire. Thank you all so very much for your time, and you all have yourselves a good night.